on the steering wheel, you've got your voice activation, uh, answering your phone, you've got your speed limiter button, which operates by pressing this button and pressing set, and then it will cap the speed to stop you gradually uh, going over the speed limit. Um, you can increase it by pressing the plus button. Um, this one here is for the ProPilot system. Um, so if you're on the motorway and it's nice and clear, you can press this button, press set, and then the car will take the speed that you're um, driving at. Then if you wish to accelerate, you can do it through these buttons here. Um, you can cap it at say 70 miles an hour, but what it'll do, it'll follow the car in front. So as they slow down, you'll slow down, and as they speed up, you'll speed up. However, it will only go as fast as you've capped it at. So if you've capped it at 70 miles an hour and they shoot off to 80, it'll stay at 70 miles an hour. This button here is for the distance that will follow the car in front by. So you can set it to sort of three, two, or one uh, spacing markings. Obviously, the faster you go, the wider it does make the gap between you and the car in front. Over on the other side, these two buttons here will toggle through your radio stations um, or the uh, music on your MP3. Volume control will also work with the radio. It'll also work with your phone calls, and if you catch it while the sat nav's talking, it'll adjust the, the volume of the sat nav. These buttons here and this one are all for the main screen there. So on the display up here, you navigate with these buttons, as I said. So you can go down to see the different options that are available. Uh, with this one, it tells you estimated charge time. Now at the moment, it's based on a six kilowatt charger. So if I press OK here, I can choose whether it's off a, off a 24 volt, 240 volt, um, or if I was doing it on a rapid charger, how long the car would take um, to, uh, to charge. So we have a 52 kilowatt charger. Um, next screen shows the battery temperatures and also the battery capacity to make sure there's no, uh, no problems with the battery itself. This one um, shows you your sort of power and regeneration. So you're putting your foot down, the power will be up here. If you ease up a little bit and it's in the green section, that'll be the most economical way of driving the car. And as you slow down, it comes into the blue section, which is for regeneration. Obviously, the, um, so as you slow down, it recharges the batteries back up and doesn't waste any uh, battery power. Also tells you what the current battery percentage is and the current miles available for the car. If we go across to the next screen, um, this is all to do with music. Uh, next one is to do with your navigation. Next one is to do with your sort of, um, average miles per kilowatt hour on that one. And your um, engine economy history. Information on the sort of uh, profile system which uh, safety features are engaged. I guess I'm carrying that one. So we put the one spot on. Yeah. It didn't change the brightness. There's, there's quite a few things you can uh, fiddle about with on there. And back, back. And then the next one, which gives you your, uh, more information, say direction of travel and uh, speed. Um, so you've got the tyre pressure warnings which come up as you drive. Going across the next one, four different settings that you can change. Uh, driver assistance, you can customise the display. Uh, vehicle settings, so if I press enter on those, you can change the lighting. You can change the locking of the vehicle. So for example, you can add selective unlock for someone who travels on their own a lot. This side of the uh, steering wheel, you've got your lighting controls. So you've got the white dot here for automatic, side lights, main lights if you wish to override it, and your fog lights front and rear. And then you have your flash and main beam pushing forward, and of course indicators on this side. 